Today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about investing in your business. Why do I say invest in your business? I'm going to give you the breakdown of the difference between being a founder, a business owner, a creator, or anyone that creates a product, service, or something that people pay their money for versus being, quote, an investor. Last year, around this time, I sold all my Bitcoin. I had so many people going after me. I had so many people who were like, you're stupid. You don't understand blockchain. And I remember I made this comment on Facebook. I said, instead of investing in Bitcoin, I'm going to invest in my business. And then there, a lot of people thought that was very funny. There was a lot of people who were like, oh, oh this, this, this. They were saying stuff. Uh, they were misguided fans because they watch everything I do. And I thought it was funny. And I realized something. Most people have no clue to what it is to start, found, run, and make a business profitable. They have no concept of what's involved. So when I said, hey, I'm going to invest in my business versus Bitcoin, they thought that was funny because they were ignorant. And also it told me how many of them really had businesses because uh, there were so many people here on YouTube, everyone that was making money from a business, and let's be clear, because a lot of people like to say money, good money. We're going to talk about people who are making 25000 and beyond per month said, I'm not messing with Bitcoin. Everyone, it's like, I'm not messing with Bitcoin. And everyone's like, you're stupid. You're going to miss out. I sold it all. Did a video on the channel that I deleted posted it on Facebook and they were still, you're stupid, you're crazy. And I kept saying back then that this thing was going to melt down. I was screaming it. I was shouting it. I talked about it all year and people were still saying I'm an investor versus a business owner. Let me give you some guidance on this. Unless you have 1 million to $10 million liquid, that is aside from money that you need to live on, you are not a big boy investor. Sure, you can buy into a 401k, but if you're making, let's say you're making $80,000 a year, okay? And you invest, let's say 2,000 a month, because that's a lot of money for most people. Most folks are not investing 2,000. So you invest 2,000 a month times 12. That's $24,000. Let's say you are a financial genius and you consistently get yields of 30%. 30% of 24,000, my bad, is $6,800. $6,800. So now you put, you put 24 in, your investments yielded you 7,000. So now you have 30, earning 30%. And you do this for let's say 10 years. So next year you put in another 2000, which brings you to 54,000. And then you get a return of 30%. So that's going to be like, let's say 12. So now you have 62 and you do the next same thing next year, three years. And you put 2000 in. So you have 62. Now you're going to put in another 24,000 and that's going to give you, um, 86,000. You get 30% of 86,000, 30% of 86 is going to be, let's say 20 something. So now you have a hundred K in three years, getting 30% returns. I'm being quiet because even if you make a high income, even if you invest a lot of money, it's going to take you a long, long, long time to come become wealthy. Unless you have an extraordinarily high income and you can invest hundred K or 200 K a year, then yeah, you can be a real boy. You can be a big boy investor. But if you're not investing those types of sums of money, you're just going to be upsetting yourself. And also if you're only beating the market by like, say you're getting 6% returns, inflation is eating into that 6%. So you're only getting like three to 4%. Oh, taxes. See what I mean? Now let's go back to 2009. I worked on this channel for six months, wrote a book, and I sold the book, 
in my first 11 months, I made $62,000. Spendable cash. We'll call it spendable cash. Um, my next year, I made $90,000. Two years, I made $150,000. Two years, investing $24,000 a year with a 30% yield. It still took three years, and it would take four to five years to make that 150. But whoa, because when you build a business and when you invest in the business, a lot of bad stuff happens, but a lot of good stuff happens. So my third year, the shows came on, they were like advertising for my book, and I did 1.5. Tell me, how many investments in the stock market yield that kind of return without a major several hundred thousand dollars or million dollars invested in the company? Because when we talk about investors, we don't really break it down. We don't break it down like Shark Tank. When they say 30% or something like this, some of these deals, they're investing a few million. Uh, Facebook early investors, they invested several hundred thousand to millions. Even if you had access, you still couldn't have got the gains that they got because you didn't have enough economic bullets to put into the gun. So hands down, starting a business is way better than, quote, investing. And also, I'm going to do a special video on this, why most businesses fail. I'm going to tell you a little bit, because I'm not going to go into it too deep, because I feel this subject needs a full video. Most businesses fail because people start businesses they have no clue to what it's about. That's why most businesses fail. But if you look at the stats on people who start businesses in a field that they have a lot of knowledge in, their success is damn near 100%. Yeah. So part of this noise, because, you know, I, I'm having this this month of December because uh, I'm poking the bear. I am messing with people. And I'm like, I'm sending them PMs. How come you not responding to my Facebook post? You were so right. You were such an investor. See, I have been through three recessions in my lifetime. And each time I came out clean, I came out stronger because I'm a practical business person. Last year, we did really well. I saw the clouds. I made moves. I have no debt. And if my business completely collapsed, I can still make it. House ain't going nowhere. The repo man ain't coming for my cars because they're already paid for. No one's coming for anything because it's all paid for. This camera's paid for. All this is paid for. And this is how you build your economic gun. By being debt-free and in the position to take advantage of opportunities, or if there are no opportunities, when it all melts down, you're still fine. Because I've been through three recessions. So all of this stuff, and I'm going to make a prediction. In the next two to three years, a lot of your favorite YouTubers, Facebook um, profits or Facebook business people, they're literally going to disappear because they've never run a real business during a recession. And they're going to make bad mistakes. They're going to make bad judgments on marketing. They're going to lose money and they're going to literally disappear or they're going to move on to whatever is popping. Guarantee it because they don't know how to run a business. A big thing with this is so many of you want to be investors, but you don't have no money. These hedge funds, they have money. They have institutional money. They have the money of insurance companies. They have the money of pension funds behind them. So when they come over and it's like, yeah, we're going to put two billion here. It's not like they pull that money out of their personal checking accounts. There's a few hedge fund man managers who made billions who do that. But the guy out of the college who's working at one of these hedge funds, who makes 200 k a year, he doesn't have any money. He has access to money. He doesn't have money. He has access to money, which is pretty much like having money, except you don't get the majority of the spoils. They do. And I, I want to have this thing because uh, I'm seeing a lot of people, Bitcoin, Forex, um, I will say Amazon FBA, even though I see it as a hustle, is a better investment than putting money into Bitcoin, Forex, or some of this wholesaling stuff. 
Now, with that said, there are real estate professionals, there are cryptocurrency managers, and there are Forex people who are professional, who have many years of experience, and they know how to play the game. And they win more times than they lose. But that's literally a handful of people. I used to date a chick who did day trading. And she told me the scariest moment she had is when she lost $80,000 in 30 minutes. She, she, she freaked out. She wanted to leave her desk. She wanted to close the blind. She said, I got to stay here. I got to stay here. And she was able to come back where she got 10,000. So she was only down 70 and she had to work for literally three months to re-earn that 80K. So essentially she broke even for three months. And she said it was one of the best experiences happened to her because she learned so much because her money was at risk. Me, I bought Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin was like 80 cents. I wish I had bought more. <laughs> I really do. And uh, I don't think Bitcoin is going to disappear. I do believe we're going to see about 1500 probably. And this is why, because see, you, you hear people make these predictions and they, they give you all these fantasies. The economy from retail standpoint, from manufacturing standpoint, real estate is slowing down and we have a lot of people who are being laid off. So right now we have a lot of people who are getting into the job market who have no job. So who's going to buy Bitcoin for Bitcoin to go up in price? Someone's got to have a high demand for it. So we're having a situation where people are going to have less money and we're entering into a recession and January is going to tell the tale because January typically can be a slow month for many businesses and many consumers don't have money because they spent heavily on Christmas. So we will see, but I would not be surprised if we see $1,500 pricing of Bitcoin in first quarter of 2019 or lower. We talking about maybe 500 to a thousand bucks because it was prostituted and we had a lot of whales playing games because they can play games with this Bitcoin market that they could not play in the real estate market and the stock market. And I've been saying this for a year and to all the folks on Facebook who thought it was funny because I couldn't read charts. Who is laughing now? Ha 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 ha. All right. So I'll see you guys later. There's a link below to something special. Check it out. And uh, I'm out.